To understand political power in Mexico, it's essential to know the history of the Institutional Revolutionary Party, or PRI. The PRI was created by military elites clinging to power after winning the Mexican Revolution. In 1928, revolutionary leader Álvaro Obregón was assassinated. General Plutarco Elias Calles came into power, and in 1929, he created the PRI's predecessor, the National Revolutionary Party, or PNR. Historian Lorenzo Mayer says since the party's birth, it was designed to exercise the power Calles inherited. That's how the PRI was born in 1929. The party was not born to win power, it was not born to compete for power, it already had power. In 1934, Calles named his successor, another revolutionary general, Lázaro Cárdenas. In 1938, Cárdenas nationalized the oil sector, creating the state-owned oil company, Pemex. He said he did it for the benefit of the nation. This is a clear and evident case that obligates the government to apply the law of expropriation, not only to subject the oil companies to obedience, but also because they've broken labor contracts with their workers. By 1946, the PRM changed its name for the last time to the Institutional Revolutionary Party, or PRI. A long period of economic growth marked by authoritarian controls characterized Mexico in the 1940s, 50s, and 60s. The world's political climate changed in 1968, and like other major capitals, Mexico City's streets filled with democracy protesters. The Mexican government ordered armed security forces to fire on hundreds of protesters in Mexico's Tlatelolco district. I fully assume the personal, ethical, social, judicial, political, and historical responsibility for the government's decisions in relation to the events of the past year. Despite the massacre, Mexico went ahead with plans to host the 1968 Summer Olympics. The pre-single party rule created the strongest central government that Mexico had ever had. In the rural areas and cities, its legacy is plain to see. This monument to the Mexican Revolution, and in fact this entire public space, is in effect a symbol of the Institutional Revolutionary Party. The 1985 Mexico City earthquake showed citizens the pre-government's inability to respond to the crisis. In the 1988 presidential election, a vote-counting computer system suddenly failed, and another pre-president, Carlos Salinas de Gortari, came into power. By the mid-1990s, a pre-government helped negotiate the creation of the North American Free Trade Agreement, but during that time, many still believed the pre was a corrupt party. In 2000, for the first time ever, the PRI loses a presidential election. President Ernesto Cedillo, also of the PRI, peacefully handed power to Vicente Fox of the National Action Party. The party lost two more presidential elections before returning to power in 2012. But a widespread perception of PRI corruption has the party's candidate in a distant third place in the current election, according to polls. Left-leaning candidate Andrés Manuel López Obrador is now favored to win Mexico's 2018 presidential election. Observers point out he too started in the ranks of the Institutional Revolutionary Party. Frank Contreras, CGTN, Mexico City.